Welcome to another episode of Between the Sets, coming at you here from DRP Fitness and Health. I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Donald Russell. What's up, my guys? How we feeling? How we feeling? This is a podcast aimed to motivate, educate, and inspire people from all walks of life, people who are looking to better themselves, whether you are a young athlete, whether you are a middle-aged individual just looking to stay fit, or whether you're a little bit older, a little bit more experienced, looking to elongate your life. This podcast is for you. Today, we are going to be talking about a very pressing issue, probably Mm -hmm. one of the most overlooked, under-recognized, and essential pieces of fitness, and that is rest and recovery. I mean, such a a huge topic. I mean, it's so general, the, the, the actual... Uh, you know, the topic that we're talking about is such a general topic, but it's so important and it gets overlooked so much. It and does. I think, uh, especially with, you know, the adults and the different styles of training you can do today and the athletes, which we're going to dive into, um, the young athletes playing, playing in so many different sports. I mean, it's just, it's so much and it's so important just to have that rest and recovery. So Absolutely. we're, we're going to get a chance to talk about it all. And I think that it's easily overlooked from an athlete's perspective as well, because athletes are so go, 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 get better, get better, get better, run as fast as I can, you know, catch the ball as well as I can. But rest and recovery is typically looked at as being lazy by some people. And I know Mm -hmm. I've struggled with that a little bit because I don't like just sit around and do nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure you are the same way, especially at the level in which you were competing at. You're almost afraid to take those rest and recovery days because it's it's almost like when you were hearing that motivational quote like, oh, you know, when when this person's down and resting, that's when the other person is working. You know, I'm working yeah, while you're it, sleeping. And, exactly. and it just goes to show you sometimes it's like, well, actually, I was, you know, my body is actually doing much better than than yours, even though you were working. Yeah. Just because I got a chance to rest and, and my body got a chance to adapt. You know, exactly. So that's, it, it's so important. And, and that kind of takes us into our first bullet point here of what we want to talk about. Just overall, of course, the importance of it is the theme, but some of the things that can happen if you err on the side of overtraining or, or overworking, just kind of what can happen to your body and to your mind when mm-hmm. you don't take that rest and recovery seriously. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's having... You know, days and, and having a structure, you know, I think that's where that's where we come in as personal trainers or as sports performance trainers is to provide the structure and to make sure that their body is adapting not only to the workout, but to their actual sport or their activity that they're going to be doing moving forward. Yeah. So it, it's, it's so important that we put our programs together and we understand the actual um, the pathway that that it, either it's an athlete or you know somebody who just wants to better their lives, and it's like, okay, what are you doing on a day to day basis? You know, are you you know doing activities such as tennis, golf? You know, somebody's saying like, oh yeah, I play pickleball, you know, four days a week. I don't want to you know have them come in and do like heavy strength days for yeah. the next four days. You or know, lateral movements the entire time. Yeah, or lateral movements. <laughs> like we, we're just beating their body up. And, you know, that's what things like overtraining comes yeah. into place just because those muscles now, they just never get a chance to actually rest or recover from that yeah. um, actual stress that you put onto it and the tissues that you're damaging. And it's like, okay, no, let's let's figure out what you're doing. Um, how can we create a plan for you that we give your, we give your body enough time to, you know, adapt and and rest and and just for you to recover not only physically but mentally from what you're doing so and and there's a couple of things that you just said that i want to make an important note of first we're going to get just down to the basics for those of you who are maybe newer to fitness maybe don't know a whole lot about it there's a couple of important things that happen when you work out the number one thing is you are breaking your muscles down Mm -hmm. when you hit a heavy bicep day a heavy leg day whatever muscle group it may be, when you are working out properly, you are breaking down your muscle tissues. So that's important, but what's just as important is being able to go to the side, get a good night's sleep, get good nutrition, and we're gonna talk to some of, or talk about some of the important things that 
can be done to aid in rest and recovery because of course it has to be intentional otherwise you're just being lazy um but your body needs that time to build itself for lack of a better term back together mm -hmm. so that's really at the basis what we're talking about here um the other thing that you said that i want to call out and and it's something that's interesting for me being a newer trainer is that these athletes have their own routines outside of this their own lives i mean we have people that still lift six days a week practice six days a week outside of their training sessions in here so we do have to program it in like you know some days you know one of our athletes will be going off to nationals next week and it'll mm -hmm. be a thursday prior and we'll have to take that day as more of an an active recovery day where mm -hmm. we're working on mobility getting the cardio up getting the body moving but not breaking down those those muscle groups as much as we should be mm -hmm. um or not well, that we should be but enough to where you, it's like, oh, I'm not working out. Like, no, mm -hmm. you're still working out. You're still working out, and I think it says it's it's definitely a lot for the the athletes. It's it's not it's not just a weight room, you know. It's kind yeah. of, and, and you know this better than anyone, you know. Especially like a lot of my lacrosse players, my young athletes. There is so it's so long. It's a year round sport. You know, you yeah. got clubs and you got school, and you got travel. Um, and not only that, you're playing another sport. Some even playing three, and which I find is so crazy now because the, these sports these kids are playing, it's all at the same time. Yeah. So I mean, imagine imagine the stress that you're putting on your body when, you know, I've I've had parents you know text me and say, hey, I would love to get my son in for training today, and I'm like, okay, excellent. What's the best time today? You should like, okay, let's do let's do the middle of the day, and it's like you know he just he or she has a you know, we got a lacrosse tournament or a lacrosse game, you know, at 8 a.m. We come see you at 12. But then he also or he or she has, you know, baseball or softball yeah. practice right afterwards. And then you even hear some say, and then we got another game later today. And it's like, wow. yeah, like when they come in, I'm like, hey, let's just stretch. Yeah, let's work on <laughs> let's some mobility stretch. for let's work an on hour some mobility because and you're flexibility. probably tight. Like it's, it's unbelievable um, the amount of things that happen. Between and not only just the games and the sports you know, in the fitness industry, is there's so much specialty and and certain different styles of training. You may go see a you know, strength and conditioning coach, or if you play baseball, you may go see a pitching coach, and you may also have a coach that works with you on the field that may not even be for baseball, but it could be for lacrosse. But you're doing so much yeah. in a week span. It's like you're putting so many hours of stress on your body is you barely even have enough time to, to get the nutrition part in and, and nutrition is what we're going to talk about in a little bit too as well but you barely have enough time to eat and let alone for you, you just to actually yeah. go home and recover and rest and it's that fine balance too because yeah. i mean this was what you had just said was we had a client that was exactly like that on friday like mm -hmm. And we get a lot of people who it's like, I want to come in, I want to get better. And that's kind of what we talked about at the beginning of this episode, where like, if you are an athlete, odds are you're going to be like a, a type A, like a go, go, go kind of person, which is awesome. But one of the hardest things that you'll probably have to learn to do is learn that balance of like tapering it off a little bit or, or just having a chill day. So on Friday, I had a client come in, they were going up to a lacrosse tournament in Orlando playing like something like six games in that weekend. And I had planned the day before to do a heavy leg day that Friday because I was unaware of this tournament that was happening mm -hmm. that weekend. And fortunately, um, the, the father of the young athlete kind of gave me a heads up that morning that, hey, we're, we have six lacrosse games this weekend. So I was <laughs> like, all right, we're going to do huge. mobility. Yeah. For the next hour because if i would have killed his legs he would not have been able to mm -hmm. compete yeah much less even probably run mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that weekend yeah. so it, again it, it comes into the programming um and just kind of having that understanding of everything is kind of interconnected with each other mm -hmm. whether it's be life sports recovery mm -hmm. strength all that good stuff um so one of the things that i'm excited to talk about with this topic is what's out there what's available in terms of recovery um because in this day and age you know you got your ice baths you got your saunas uh -huh. theraguns it seems like there's a different device to do all these different things so i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this over to you at first and kind of hear what your thoughts are on 
recovery practices, recovery measures, mm -hmm. things that are good, things that are bad. What are your thoughts there? I, I think I love all of it, to be honest with you. Um, I, I love the cold plunge. Um, when I played football, high school, college, um, we lived off of cold tubs in college, cold tubs and saunas. It, it was that simple, that basic. Um, I, I think a lot of it really, it boils down all the way to the foundation of rest, let your body recover, get some sleep. What are you putting in your body for the next day or to recover from that actual workout? Yeah. You know, what's, are we getting enough carbs? Are we getting enough protein? You know, what's our body telling us? Is our muscles inflamed? Like we have so many different warning signs that we just have to be cautious. And I think another factor is the environment, you know, down here in Florida, if, if for those of you who you know, not familiar with us and you're just here listening, but for one, we thank you. But absolutely, it's, it's we're down here in Jupiter, Florida. So you get a lot of you know, it's, it's just hot. And with a lot of these sports that's happening, especially for the summer, I mean, we're talking you open the door in the morning, 8 a.m. And it's like 85 degrees, you know, yeah. and it's so humid. So in the middle of the day, it's just scorching hot. So, you know, have you replenished yourself with enough water, enough electrolytes? Absolutely. You know, did you, you know, fill yourself with the right amount of carbs or the right right amount of proteins to get you through the day or just to even get you through the workout are you replenishing yourself afterwards and when can you get home to let your body just rest and recover and just you know get ready for your next workout or for the next day so i think the cold plunges are great i think it's great for after workouts you know there's been some research as far as the weight training, you know, doing a cold plunge afterwards, does it have a negative effect on the muscle growth? It, I, I think with a lot of those things, it, it's it's more so a feel. Yeah. Um, you can lean either way. Um, I, I've spoke to a lot of specialists. I spoke to doctors about, you know, what's the adaptation that happens after a cold plunge for workouts as, as far as muscle growth? You know, does it deplenish that? Does it decrease, you know, the the muscle activity as far as growing your muscles? Um, I, and honestly, it's one of those 50-50 things. Yeah. You know, one person it's may say topic. it's, it's That's very why I controversial. Wanted to bring it up. Yeah, it's very controversial. Um, how I look at it is if you're sore, I want to recover with some ice or yes. any kind of cold therapy. And then before I get into any activity, I want to have some heat. I want to be able to get the blood flow within the muscles, get that range of motion, get that stretching. Um, I want my body temperature to be a little bit warm. It's the same thing when you go into an actual workout and you want to get more of that tempo, that warm up, just before you even start getting into yeah. hitting any kind of uh, exercises or movements. You want your body to be ready. So Absolutely. Heat and ice is always my go-to, and it's, it's what I yeah. tell everybody. And then everything else is just, hey, are you sleeping? How many how many hours of sleep did you get? And Bingo. You, oh, I got four hours. Yeah, it's like, yeah, no. You're not doing <laughs> it. doesn't matter what we For put real. in your body. Your body hasn't recovered. Yeah. Like, so regardless of whatever you've, you know, you've eaten or whatever your warm-up is or whatever your warm-up protocol is, you, your body is not getting enough time to recover. So it's like go to sleep. Yeah. Try to get seven to eight hours of sleep if you can. Even if you're not one to, you know, I don't feel, I don't sleep as, as I just need five hours. It's like, well, we'll stay and lay in the bed for another yeah, two, three hours. Exactly. Like just stay off your feet and just, just recover. Yeah. And I, I'm glad that you said that because to me, and I know, again, these are controversial topics and that's mm -hmm. why we want to hit them because we want to give you the facts and we want to give you our opinions, whether me and Donald agree, whether we disagree. Mm -hmm. um, there is to me, nothing more important than the food that you take in mm -hmm. and the sleep that you get. I always like to tell whether they be, you know, again, our, our young athletes or, or, you know, middle-aged to more experienced individuals, as I like to call them, um, your body is a well-oiled machine and you have to think of it like a car. Yep. If you are driving a Ferrari around and you put diesel gas inside that Ferrari, it is going to probably explode. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm not the biggest car guy uh, yeah, in the world. I don't, we don't own a Ferrari. We wish we do. Yeah. So. Neither Donald or I. Just a sneak peek. We do not drive Ferraris. <laughs> <laughs> so. Business is not that booming yet. We're, we're trying to get there. But Maybe once the podcast yet. takes off. <laughs> um, but uh, to, to Donald's point, like nothing else is going to really matter outside if you're not getting proper sleep 
and if you're not getting proper nutrition. So yeah, we can break down the details of that, but to put it out simply, carbs an hour plus before Mm -hmm. you do extensive exercise because your body is going to use those carbs as the fuel, as Mm -hmm. the, the energy, the gasoline, if you will, to expend it during that workout and some fat mm-hmm. and then protein afterwards, mm-hmm. whether it's lean chicken, whether it's steak with the healthy fats in it, that's what's going to help your muscles build back together. Because again, going back down to the basics here, your muscles are made out of protein. Mm-hmm. When you are in here, when you are playing a game, when you are doing anything active, you are breaking down those proteins that are in your muscles and it is absolutely essential to get those proteins back into your body so that they can repair your muscles. I mean, I preach that to, it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, 60, whether you're one of our 10 year old young studs that comes in here, like I ask all of them, what are you doing after this? Yes, what are you eating? Their answer better be 20 grams of protein. (laughs) What are you eating? What do you put into your body? It's very simple. Yeah, and there's a reason for it. And it's exactly that. I mean, you know, you could beat your body down and beat your body down, but if you are not getting that, fuel and that proper nutrition, like it's not going to come back together. Yes. It's just going to be broken down for no reason. Yeah. Um, the other side of that, as you, as you pointed out is sleep, like that is sleep is, and there are a lot of really interesting studies coming out about sleep and the importance of it. Um, but the bottom line is that, you know, everyone knows that sleep is when your body, when your mind, kind of puts itself all back together. Mm -hmm. Like there is a reason why humans in general aren't designed to just go on 24 hours a day, 24 hours a day. (laughs) Like we need to be able to, to sleep and rest. And again, it comes back into that's when your body is repairing itself, putting Mm -hmm. your muscles back together for lack of better terms, um, getting your mind refreshed. Mm -hmm. Um, so then when we go and talk about, you know, the, the cold plunge, the sauna, there is absolutely a need for it, especially like like you said, like with the cold, cold plunge, like to deal with inflammation, yep. um, heat to get the blood circulating mm-hmm. because of course, like our body is whatever percent blood, like mm-hmm. it needs to be flowing to mm-hmm. be able to work properly. Um, but above all else, if you are not getting proper sleep and proper nutrition, that stuff in the long term is just not going to work. Yeah, it, it, it'll it'll work against you. Um, it's just a matter of time. Um, yeah, which kind of leads us into our next topic, which is the short and long term consequences of you know not having that rest and recovery, and that leads to the injuries. Um, I always tell a lot of my athletes and a lot of my uh, the parents of athletes. You, you, we have these warning signs, the inflammation, the, you know, little nicks, tears, bruises, uh, strains, which is a big one. The injuries, the warning signs. We always have these things that tells us, hey, something is not right. It, it may be something that we want to pay attention to, you know, whether that's an injury that just sits us out for, you know, four to six weeks, something that our body just needs to recover. But it's, hey, look, I gave you that warning sign. You know, yeah. you know, you you were able to sit down for four to six weeks and recover it. But is that a warning sign that? hey, I may need to pay attention to something because there's something off with the foundation, muscle imbalance. You know, is there a flexibility issue? Is there a overtraining issue? Something is happening and I'm giving you this warning sign and that's something that I need to pay attention to before it becomes a long-term Absolutely. issue. Absolutely. So, it, those things are huge. And it, one thing that I always like to say, and we, we talk about this, but the human body is designed to do incredible things. Like you think about, you know, where the human body, our ancestors came from. Like we're talking about people that walked hundreds of miles, Mm -hmm. you know, over a a short span of time to go to their hunting grounds to, you know, we won't get into all the ancestral stuff. The bottom line is, is the human body is by nature designed to do incredible things. And with that comes that ability to give you those warning signs, Yes. whether you're overtraining, whether you're doing something wrong form wise and your body's trying to tell you, hey, I'm not supposed to move this way. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to be in tune with your body and what it's saying. 
Now, the trade-off to that, and, and this is where the balance comes in, is, you know, that old saying, you know, if you get hit, walk it off. Yeah. Like, there are certain situations where, like, you just have to walk it off. Like, if you're on a run and you cramp up, like, if you just keep pushing and keep running, like, that cramp's yeah. going to go away. Yeah. So there's there's a little bit of an asterisk there, but in general, just be in tune with your body. Yeah. Like, if if your ankle hurts, try to walk. If it hurts while you walk, then odds are something's probably not right. So yeah, something usually is. <laughs> One of my uh, college coaches used to say, "Are you in pain or are you injured?" Yes. Those are two totally different things. Very you different know. things. It, it, it's two totally different things. And and even when I played in in college. I remember having a sprained MCL tear, and it was like, crap, this mm. thing hurts. But, again, do you want to lose that starting spot? Like, you got an yeah. opportunity here to, to showcase what's going on. So ask the question, are you in pain or are you actually injured? And those things are, are huge. But And that was one of the things that every game, especially when I played at University of Kentucky, every game was, was such a battle because – you know, these guys who you're planning, they, they call it the baby NFL for a reason. Yeah. Like the SEC was just no joke. No and joke. By, it was almost like if you was a second string guy or a third string guy, you were really like a first string, but we, we call it 1A or 1B because by week five, you're like, I, I can barely walk. And I remember that was half the games every, after every, every Saturday game. It was like Sunday, I could barely move. Monday, Okay, I'm able to walk a little bit, but it hurts to to put my hand over my head, scratches, bruises, everything. Tuesday is like, oh, good, I can finally walk without limping. Wednesday was I can jog. Thursday, okay, I'm I'm back to about three quarter speed. Friday, I better hurry up and and get as much rest as possible yeah. because you're going to war again on Saturday. Yeah, and you do it all over again. And That's then the cycle. Each, each week it gets worse and worse and worse. By the time the end of the season came, you were like, oh, okay, I could tell you what body part doesn't hurt yeah. more than more than what hurts exactly and, and those and that's the thing about rest and recovery and that's why it was so huge for us hey during the week rest your body yeah put nutrition into your body like recover like those things were huge yeah and it's interesting that you bring that up as well because i mean you know i've been watching a lot of playoff hockey lately um and you know for a fact that yeah, no shout one out panthers, shout out to the panthers the panthers. florida panthers Come taking on, panthers. down those new york rangers bring it Come home on. we're bringing bring it home, home the stanley baby. cup bring it home the redemption season <laughs> um but it's the same with football and the same with hockey the way i see it and obviously you come from a much higher level i mean i never even played football so mm -hmm. like there's that <laughs> but lacrosse is similar contact sport yeah, yeah um but the bottom line is when you're in those playoffs or when you're in that late season Season, like your body's just not going to be at a hundred percent. No, like, no. and that's where the risk reward factor comes into me. Like yeah. you just said, like there's always someone coming for your spot. Mm -hmm. So you know, if it's game time and you know your calf's a little tweaked up, you got to ask yourself, like, okay, should I push on here and mm -hmm. play in this game? Because am I am I going to lose my starting spot? Or if I do push on and play through this game, am I going to injure my calf in a way that is season ending and then you're definitely losing yeah, your spot? Then, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> when that nutrition and sleep comes in, you know, yeah. big time. Exactly. You, you just got, you got to listen to your body. And especially for, you know, even for some of our adults, when, when they're doing workouts and I always tell them, hey, I, I'm only seeing you for... 45 minutes to an hour of your day what happens outside of here you have to let me know before right. that next workout so I, I i can kind of prep for what's going on so if you if i trained you on tuesday and then you went and played pickleball on wednesday and you injured something you know let me know if or if you tweak something on wednesday let me know because thursday I, I may be programming for you to do something yeah. that involves you know whatever muscle group that is that you're injured by or hurt so I, I need to know that because I could be making something worse. Absolutely. You know, I, you could have a tweak in the hamstrings and all of a sudden now I'm making you do deadlifts or I'm making you yeah. do, you know, hamstring curls. And it's like next thing you know, Friday, you text me like, oh, my, I, I can't. It, it, yeah. it hurts like bad. And I'm like, OK, yeah, I, I, I may have made it worse <laughs> yeah. with the actual workouts because we didn't give your your body enough chance to recover from that type of injury you know it may have been inflamed so right. those are the things that we need to to watch out for so it's so it's huge to actually prep and program 
the workouts. But again, it's just having that conversation with one another to say, all right, what's what's going on with your body? Did we get enough sleep? Did we get enough rest? What what did you do in the past couple of days that we may need to be aware of? Absolutely. Like those things are huge. That's a great call out too. For all of my clients out there that are listening, because I know that I'm gonna just send you this episode when it comes out. <laughs> please, please text me call me if you hurt something if something's not feeling okay it's okay to tell me a couple of days in advance before of our before our session that something's not feeling right and that we might need to pivot because it's a lot easier for me to program that in advance than have you come in and say Oh, by the way, I hurt my shoulder two yeah. days ago, and I planned a yeah. shoulder workout for you. Yeah. <laughs> and and a, and a side note to you know, new and young personal trainers, like it's it's not all about just working out and creating a plan for them. You you become almost like best. I tell everybody, I have so many best friends in the gym that you know I'm I'm texting them all day. Yeah, you know, what's going on? Or they're sending me pictures. Hey, look look what I'm eating. Did you see this new restaurant? Like we become yeah. so close. So it's it's not just about the training. The training happens, you know, when they're here, of course, but what happens outside, you need to know that too. It's almost like you're that nosy neighbor. I, I need to know what you're yeah. doing. Where are you sleeping? How are you sleeping? What, what kind of <laughs> covers you got? You Where are you sleeping? What kind of water are you drinking? <laughs> like I'm I'm literally like a, a stalker when it comes to yeah. you. Hey, hey, I seen you driving over, you know, in this in this strip mall. I only see fast food restaurants in that strip mall. Why <laughs> were you, you there? Why were you there? <laughs> yeah. I need to track your location. <laughs> we're watching you, clients. We're watching you we're at watching all times. All you. We're watching we all have a, you. a network of spies. No, Every, I'm just kidding. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Kyle's kidding. I'm not kidding. I watch you. I yeah, watch no, you. I'm not I kidding. I watch your Instagrams. I watch everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other points to make about the topic of rest and recovery? I think that there's a lot that we could say about this. I mean, our clients yeah. know that we preach this stuff all the time. There, there, um, there is a lot we could say. I think the last would I, I would kind of lean on is the strategy for, I would say, like for youth athletes, parents of youth athletes, um, understanding and knowing when something is not wrong, you know, which you know, your child when they're playing the sport, understand, you know, if they have those nicks and bruises, you know, making sure you have that conversation with them, just trying to figure out how they're feeling or what's happening with their body or even what I like to call the, the mental days. You know, it may be one of those days where, you know, you as a parent, you go to your child and say, hey, look, I know we have practice and all that. We're not doing none of those things today. You know, you're going to go to the beach or you let you stay home, play some video games, just relax and and get them away from the sport. Um, it is, I think it's huge now just because, you know, with the social media, you know, the multiple sports you're playing in a day or in a week, you know, sometimes you just need to step away. It's not even about an ice bath and, and heat yeah. and all those things are great. But sometimes it's about, hey, you know what? Don't even think about you know, Absolutely. your sport today. How, you, you wake up when you want to wake up. You know, we'll do our things, you know, we'll get you the nutrition. I still want you to get your rest and your recovery. But, you know, play your video games. Go be a, go be a kid, you know. Yeah. Go go and just enjoy yourself, yeah. you know. And, Absolutely. And if you want to go play, you know, video games till, until late, you know, do so. If you want to go out and just, just have that mental day for yourself. And I, I think that's huge. I think that's huge for everyone because even for ourselves, you know, we, we train so much and, and we coach so much. You know, for everyone else, I think, you know, we also have to have our mental days where we step away from the gym. Yeah. We kind of step away from everybody. Even, you know, if it's not for a day, for a few hours to just reset, you know, that's 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 so huge right now. And it's it's so big right now in the, in the industry, especially the fitness industry, um, knowing how to reset yourself mentally and just get away and just unplug. I Absolutely. think that's huge. The mind will always quit before the body does. Yes, it all will. All of my clients hear me scream that at all times. Yes, it will. And I mean it. You got to take care of your mind because of that. Because if your head's not in the game, then it doesn't matter how good to go your body is. Because uh -huh. you're going to either not be focused and get yourself injured. Mm -hmm. You're either going to quit on yourself and just not get the most out of the workout. So take care of your mind out there alongside your body. Uh -huh. So closing bullet points in no particular order. Number one, sleep and nutrition. Mm -hmm. You need it, you need to embrace it, you need to focus on it. Um, number two, don't overtrain. It's okay to take a couple of, you know, 
well, not a couple, but a day or two off mm-hmm. um, to really listen to your body, be in tune with your body. Um, and that leads me to my third bullet point that I was going to say, just listen to your body. Your mm-hmm. body is a well-oiled machine. Mm-hmm. It is designed through thousands of years of evolution um, to perform at very high levels. And it's there to tell you what it needs and what it does not need if you just pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. So, and, yeah. and, and strategies and having those mental days, man. Listen, listen to yourself. Listen, you know, listen to what's going on. You know, not only physically but mentally. You know, have those days where y- you just get away. Absolutely, you know, get away and relax, man. Take care of yourself out Take there. Take care of yourself, man. Well, our our prestigious audience, I think that uh, that about wraps things up. There you go. Donald has <laughs> been, been itching to use that button. I've been <laughs> itching. When I figure out all four of these buttons, you guys are going to get sick we got of a, me. We got a clap button, too. I think it's this one. I'm loving it. There you go. Yeah, all yeah, right. Thank you. It. Thank you, please. Um, please don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this episode. If you want to see or hear more episodes like this, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be coming out with these podcasts pretty consistently. Mm -hmm. Um, Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. If you don't like what we had to say here, if you have varying opinions on rest and recovery, or if you just want to chime in on you liked something that we said, go ahead, drop a comment. We will be paying attention to the comments. We will be interacting with you guys um thank you to everyone listening and thank you to all of our clients who come in here and make this possible Mm -hmm. until the next time be good be great and we'll uh we'll catch you between the sets Mm -hmm. and go to sleep go to sleep (laughs) and eat carbs all right folks